This is my response to two videos on YouTube where Pastor Marcellinus Regis proves that the Holy Spirit is a separate God. I was able to post my comment on the first video but not the second, hence my decision to post both comments here. Thank you for your presentation. I have a few issues. 1. You completed by saying, I say this under the authority of the Word of God, hence I lay down my case. At the beginning of the presentation you stated, it was agreed that Jesus Christ, the second person of the Godhead, would become the surety for man's redemption. Please show me where the Word of God states this. 2. You also stated that, anytime you see her, Ellen White's writings, she uses the phrase, pillars of our faith. She is referring to these five pillars, namely the second coming, the sanctuary, the state of the dead, the Sabbath, and the spirit of prophecy. So, let's connect some dots. When dealing with Dr. John Harvey Kellogg's controversy, the then leader of the GC, Elder A.G. Daniels, wrote to Ellen White's son, W.C. White, on October 29, 1903. Ever since the council closed, I have felt that I should write you confidentially regarding Dr. Kellogg's plans for revising and republishing the Living Temple. He said that some days before coming to the council, he had been thinking the matter over and began to see that he had made a slight mistake in expressing his views. He said that all the way along he had been troubled to know how to state the character of God and his relation to his created works. He then stated that his former views regarding the Trinity had stood in his way of making a clear and absolutely correct statement, but that within a short time he had come to believe in the Trinity and could now see pretty clearly where all the difficulty was and believed that he could clear the matter up satisfactorily. He told me that he now believed in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, and his view was that it was God the Holy Ghost and not God the Father that filled all space and every living thing. W.C. White replied on November 4, 1903, stating, Mother and I have just read your letter of October 29th in which you speak of the various plans that have been proposed for the revision and reproduction of the Living Temple. I think she will write to you soon expressing her views regarding this. WCWLB 22, page 478. Ellen White later wrote a letter directly to Dr. Kellogg in letter 253 dated November 20, 1903. Patchwork theories cannot be accepted by those who are loyal to the faith and to the principles that have withstood all the opposition of satanic influence. 18 Lil T.M.'s, Lieutenant 253, 1903, paragraph 28. Remember Dr. Kellogg wanted to patch up the pantheistic theories in the book The Living Temple with the Trinity Doctrine. Sister White also wrote, I must tell you that your ideas in regard to some things have been decidedly wrong. I would that you could see your errors. The book Living Temple is not to be patched up, a few changes made in it, and then advertised and praised as a valuable production. It would be better to present the physiological parts in another book under another title. When you wrote that book, you were not under the inspiration of God. There was by your side the one who inspired Adam to look at God in a false light. Your whole heart needs to be changed, thoroughly and entirely cleansed. 18 Lel TM's London 253, 1903, paragraph 1. I present to you the things that the Lord has presented to me. There is a great work to be done. We are to take hold of the work understandingly, praying, believing, and receiving the Holy Spirit. Thus only can we do the work given us. I am required by God to bear testimony against Living Temple. Whatever your associates may say concerning this book, I take the position now and forever that it is a snare. No union will be formed by our people as a whole upon the theories that you have begun to present in that book. You may regard this as forever decided. As a people we shall stand firm on the platform that has withstood test and trial. We shall hold to the sure pillars of our faith. The principles of truth that God has revealed to us are our only foundation. They have made us what we are. These new fanciful theories are fascinating and misleading. They endanger the eternal interests of the soul. The scriptures do not sustain them. Clothed with the Christian armor, shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, we shall stand firm against these misleading theories. You may turn and rest the word of God to your own destruction, but I entreat you not to do this. 18 Lieutenant 253, 1903, paragraph 24. As can clearly be seen, 
she was not addressing any of the five pillars you mentioned, but rather the personality of God, which is foremost in the fundamental principles the church held by then. I have been instructed by the heavenly messenger that some of the reasoning in the book Living Temple is unsound and that this reasoning would lead astray the minds of those who are not thoroughly established on the foundation principles of present truth. It introduces that which is naught but speculation in regard to the personality of God and where his presence is. No one on this earth has a right to speculate on this question. The more fanciful theories are discussed, the less men will know of God and of the truth that sanctifies the soul. EGW SPTB 0251.3, 1904. These truths were reached upon after much Bible study with prayer and fasting. My husband, Elder Joseph Bates, Father Pierce, Elder Edson, and many others who were keen, noble, and true were among those who, after the passing of the time in 1844, searched for truth. At our important meetings, these men would meet together and search for the truth as for hidden treasure. I met with them, and we studied and prayed earnestly, for we felt that we must learn God's truth. Often we remained together until late at night, and sometimes through the entire night, praying for light and studying the word. As we fasted and prayed, great power came upon us. A line of truth extending from that time to the time when we shall enter the city of God was plainly marked out before me, and I gave my brethren and sisters the instruction that the Lord had given me. They knew that when not in vision, I could not understand these matters, and they accepted as light direct from heaven the revelations given me. Thus the leading points of our faith as we hold them today were firmly established. Point after point was clearly defined, and all the brethren came into harmony. 18 LTMs, Lieutenant 253, 1903, Par 4. The whole company of believers were united in the truth. There were those who came in with strange doctrines, but we were never afraid to meet them. Our experience was wonderfully established by the revelations of the Holy Spirit. 18 LTMs, Lieutenant 253, 1903, Paragraph 5. After the passing of the time, we were opposed and cruelly falsified. Erroneous theories were pressed in upon us by men and women who had gone into fanaticism. I was directed to go to the places where these people were advocating these erroneous theories, and as I went, the power of the Spirit was wonderfully displayed in rebuking the errors that were creeping in. Satan himself, in the person of a man, was working to make of no effect my testimony regarding the position that we now know to be substantiated by Scripture. 18 Lil TMs, Lieutenant 253, 1903, Paragraph 8. Just such theories as you have presented in Living Temple were presented then. These subtle, deceiving sophistries have again and again sought to find place amongst us. But I have ever had the same testimony to bear which I now bear regarding the personality of God. 18 LTMs, Lot 253, 1903, Paragraph 9. In the letter, she also touched on something that ties up with item 1 above. Our redemption was wrought out, not by the Son of God remaining in heaven, but by the Son of God's becoming incarnate, taking humanity upon him and coming to this world. 18 LTMs, Lieutenant 253, 1903, Part 29. The phrase Son of God remaining in heaven shows Jesus Christ was the Son of God even before coming to the world to save us, which is biblical. 1 John 4, 9. Indeed, the Bible states eternal life comes by believing in Jesus as the Son of God. John 20, 31, 1 John 4, 15, 1 John 5, 5, 12. I am instructed to warn our brethren and sisters not to discuss the nature of our God. Many of the curious who attempted to open the Ark of the Testament to see what was inside were punished for their presumption. We are not to say that the Lord God of heaven is in a leaf or in a tree, for he is not there. He sitteth upon his throne in the heavens. 18. Lou T. M.'s, Lieutenant 253, 1903, paragraph 15. I speak decidedly in order that you may know that unless there is a decided change in you, there can be no hope of a union between you and those who are holding the beginning of their confidence firm unto the end. You have made the division. We must stand firm for the truths that the Lord has given us as the pillars of our faith. 18 LTMs, Lieutenant 253, 1903, paragraph 27. As we continue to explore such thought-provoking questions, 
It's important to remember that respectful discourse and a willingness to listen to differing viewpoints are key to gaining a deeper understanding of our faith.